House is one of the weirdest, most off-the-wall horror movies that I've ever seen, and that's saying a lot. The premise itself sounds pretty straightforward. A group of schoolgirls go to a haunted house where spooky things start happening. But once the film actually starts, you quickly realize that this isn't your typical haunted house movie. <laughs> House is an insane fever dream brought to life, a completely surreal blend of comedy, horror, and pure creative chaos. It's one of those movies that defies any traditional expectations and somehow gets away with it. The weirdness is what makes it so memorable, and as the story progresses, it adds an eerie layer to the horror. The more bizarre the film gets, the more unsettling it becomes, and you can't look away, even when you feel like you should. I first discovered House the way a lot of people probably do, through the Criterion Collection. This is a crazy f***ing movie. <laughs> this is how much I like that movie. <laughs> I was at Barnes & Noble during their Criterion sale and the poster caught my eye. That grinning cat on the cover is so strange and hypnotic that I just couldn't resist buying it. I had no idea what the movie was about, but I figured, why not? I went home, put it on, and let me tell you, I had no clue what I was in for. Within the first few minutes, I was completely hooked. This wasn't just some run-of-the-mill haunted house flick. This was something else entirely. I ended up loving every single second of it, and ever since then, it's been one of my all-time favorite horror movies. Now, don't get me wrong, house isn't for everyone. I found that out the hard way when I tried to introduce it to a group of friends around Halloween. We were watching a bunch of horror movies on HBO Max, and I suggested we put on house. That didn't go so well. The movie's surreal style and over-the-top weirdness, it just, it killed the vibe. Like, almost immediately. It, it just killed the vibe. We ended up turning it off after, like, 10 minutes. But, for me, it's an endlessly fascinating, boundary-pushing masterpiece. But, I get why others aren't as on board with it. House is just that bizarre. It's not really a vibe movie, it's an experience. You have to go into it knowing that you're going to see something that challenges your expectations at every turn. <laughs> what makes House even more fascinating is the story behind its creation. Believe it or not, this whole insane ride started out as a studio project for Toho. Yeah, the company behind Godzilla. They wanted to cash in on the success of Jaws with their own horror movie, but instead of doing just a cheap knockoff, they somehow ended up with House. <coughs> Director Nobuhiko Obayashi was given the reins, and he used the opportunity to make a film unlike anything else out there. Drawing inspiration from his preteen daughter's ideas and his own experiences with life, including the loss of his childhood friends in the Hiroshima bombings, Obayashi crafted a movie that blends horror, comedy, and avant-garde filmmaking into one bizarre package. It's important to note that House, like Godzilla, reflects post-war Japanese trauma. Beneath all the crazy visuals and absurd humor, there are themes of loss and grief that speak directly to Japan's experience after World War II. For example, Gorgeous's aunt, who becomes the film's main antagonist, represents that unresolved loss. She's someone who died waiting for her fiancé to return from World War II, and that unfulfilled longing transforms her into a vengeful spirit. This grief permeates the film, though it's wrapped in a completely wild and surreal package that makes you almost forget about it until the horror starts sinking in. But let's talk about the style of House, because that's what really sets this movie apart. It's a kaleidoscope of wild, disorienting imagery that constantly keeps you on your toes. The editing is frantic with jump cuts, freeze frames, and random inserts that give the film a chaotic, almost hallucinatory feel. The special effects, which might seem dated by today's standards, are what make House feel so charming. They're crude, yes, but they're used in such creative ways that it just adds to the surreal vibe of the whole movie. From a piano that devours one of the girls, to a severed head floating around and biting people, House constantly throws insane visuals at you without ever stopping to catch its breath. One of the things I love about House is how it blends horror and comedy so seamlessly. 
The film is full of strange, almost cartoonish moments that make you laugh, like when the ant's severed head chomps down on someone's butt, but then it swings right back into eerie nightmarish territory where people are bathed in blood. It's a balancing act that very few films manage to pull off, but House does it effortlessly. And the weird thing is, even though it's so strange and out there, None of it feels out of place. It all fits within the film's unique logic. It's almost as if House exists in its own little universe, where the rules of reality don't exactly apply, and that's part of what makes it so captivating. The music in House is another element that shouldn't work, but it totally does. The score, composed by the Japanese rock band Go Diego, is quirky, upbeat, and totally at odds with what you would expect from a horror movie. But somehow, it adds to the dreamlike quality of the film. The music gives House this weird, almost fairy tale like atmosphere, which makes the horror elements hit even harder when they do arrive. One moment, you're listening to this bouncy, whimsical tune, and the next, a girl is being eaten by a piano. It's jarring, but in the best way possible. Now, when I watch older movies with a lot of special effects, I try to put myself in the mindset of someone seeing it for the first time when it originally came out. So for example, The Terminator came out in 1984. So when I watch that, I like to imagine, okay, I'm a person from 1984. What am I thinking when I'm watching this? Do these effects hold up for the time? With House, that's fucking impossible. <laughs> this movie feels just as fresh, original, and downright strange now as it must have in 1977. Watching it in 2024, I get the sense that anyone seeing this for the first time would have the same what the fuck am I watching reaction that audiences did have back then. House doesn't feel like a product of its time. It feels like a product of someone's completely unfiltered imagination. It's timeless in the sense that it doesn't really belong to any specific era of filmmaking. What I really appreciate about House is that it's a perfect example of what can happen when studios let filmmakers take risks. Obayashi wasn't confined by genre conventions or expectations. He was allowed to experiment, to be weird, and to create something truly original. That kind of creative freedom is rare, especially nowadays, and it's part of why House is such a masterpiece. It's pure, unfiltered creativity being just splattered on screen, and it's a reminder of what movies can be when directors are given the chance to let their imaginations run wild. All in all, House is a film that's hard to categorize. It's part horror, part comedy, part fantasy, part avant-garde, part drama, but more than anything, it's a completely unique experience. There's nothing else like it. The film's blend of surreal imagery, offbeat humor, and underlying emotional depth makes it one of the most fascinating and memorable horror films ever made. Whether you love it or whether you hate it, House is the kind of movie that's... And for me, it's a constant reminder of the power of creative freedom in filmmaking. With all of that out of the way, I'm Cole McCormick. You're watching Firewind Media. Consider becoming a member to support the channel. It's like Patreon, but for YouTube. It's $1.99 a month. You'll get member shoutouts and your name featured as an executive producer in all of our film projects. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's an extra perk for anyone that wants to support the channel while getting some unique content in exchange. Either way, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.